Hi everyone, it is still May 7, 2019. In all the time that I have been posting videos, never have I seen it quite like what we are experiencing right now. I just, you know, come home, I see the comments, I get the emails, and I do a little bit of research, and voila, we've got a whole mess of flooding, and I'm going to take you through it, but I'm going to start with this Orville Dam, which is continuing to inch up. It is now at 887.35 feet, and the last time I did this video, I think I gave you the 12 o'clock data, 887.21, so it just continues to inch up. Unbelievable. Houston. Houston. Live. Uh, ABC 13 Houston is flooding. It's really, uh, I will link below um, homes and cars underwater. I mean, really? Houston. Okay. I have to I, I, I have to pause you for a second because I just realized I want to take a look at that satellite and the radar that I showed earlier. And here it is. This was uh, at 8:16 a.m. this morning on the East Coast. So it was are you two hours behind? I think so. So this was at 6 a.m. and there was where where is the weather? How did you suddenly get massive flooding in Houston? Well, look at all of the frequencies in play. When man controls the weather, anything can happen. Okay. So, let's uh, let's take it all the way to the end to see what's happening. Live coverage to continue. Chris, this right here. Yes. You know, what kind of things have you seen since you've been driving around? Uh, well, I, we pulled about four or five cars out already. Um, People sitting in their cars, they just didn't want to leave their car. And here we have something going on right here. It looks like they were stranded, they pulled off to the side nice. and could no longer go. Uh, looks like a trucker might be helping these folks here on the side. Again, we're on 36 in Rosenberg. I guess he might help them pull them out. Get out and check it out. Stefania, as you're getting out of the truck there, I know Noe is in the back shooting. Um, is is your driver at all worried sometimes when he hits some of these high water areas? Well, he's got a he's got a big truck, and some big wheels. I kind of asked him the same thing, you know, before we went in. Um, so I wanted to be sure. I took them off because we don't have time to be getting stuck. Yeah, no, we're live, by the way. Are you trying to pull it out? No, he's got the battery. So it, it sounds like, like he's got a mic on his battery. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I will link below to this live broadcast. And this is in Humble, Texas. And this was today. I'm here at Deerbrook Mall. I put my car down that way. Believe it or not, it went up past my uh, past my seats, man. I. I I had to push my car back. And you see the water's still coming up through the emergency drain over there. It's right here at Deerbrook Mall in uh, Humble, Texas. Uh, if anybody's out this way, be real careful because it's, uh, it's way steep out yonder. Rain falling there. How's it looking? So we tried to get out of the neighborhood where we were and we only got two blocks before we ran into this main road. And there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cars stopped in this road. We realized that the scanner traffic was talking about this exact place. 
Lake Bridge in Reading. If we flip around, I'll show you one truck is trying to go through it now. Most people are not trying, and some, as you can tell, are stuck there. We probably have more than a dozen cars here. The fire department is on their way. So as you can tell, because of how fast it's coming down, it's just so fast that the car, it, from, for in, in 20 minutes, it goes from nothing to filled like this, and now they're stuck. Bill and Lauren? I'm sorry, something else is going on here. Um, you guys in Texas, in, in Houston, could you let us know, did the rain come down so, well, like a, we've had torrential rainfalls before and never did we see this kind of flooding. So, um, are they closing off the storm drains? I, 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 I can't believe that this is taking place once again in Houston, but, you know, and all right, so I posted that video showing that in areas that are not the mega regions, uh, they're getting hit repeatedly. Houston is in a mega region, the Texas Triangle. So why does Houston get hit repeatedly? A lot of it is to bring about higher taxes and that smart city where you will have to modify your homes get your energy appliances and all of that will well a lot of states already have that legislated and they're just waiting for the united nations to tell you or to tell the state officials okay now start enforcing in all homes they have to switch over to energy saving appliances they have to have all smart appliances um, and they will have to you know, modify their homes so that they are flood resistant. All of this is going to be a huge expense. So when they had this kind of flooding, like Harvey, Harvey brought in hundreds of millions of dollars in donations. The people who needed those donations didn't see it. Where is that money going? Well, a lot of that is going to reshape these mega regions in accordance with Agenda 2030. All right, this is what's happening now. You see that burst of frequencies right there where did this where did this come from they manufactured it they manufactured it and of course now I, it's only well 10 o'clock they started early interesting uh, about a half hour ago, the buzzing that I was hearing got so loud and so unbelievably annoying. And I went over to the site and boom, there, I live here in Anderson, South Carolina, right in this area. So they had turned on or uh, intensified or the Doppler radar. So now they're claiming that we have line storms, line storms. This is the line of storms. We did not see this on a regular basis. The severity, this is what the satellite is showing you, all of these, well, that's quite a line right there, uh, but this is high frequency heating from our Doppler radar stations. This is not what we have. This is unprecedented, but it's not from climate change or global warming.
look how nicely flatlined is this cloud up here. Unbelievable. Well, let us just do a quick uh, check of radar, and yeah, I can I can even see those harp next red rings. Let's take a closer look. Yep, there they are. Let me just stop it so for any of you who this is what you want to look for, okay? These circle uh, patterns, circular patterns, um, and the straight edged lines. This is what's causing all of this flooding, the tornadoes. You can see the circular pattern right down here. And yes, generally you can see it at the periphery of these storms. And I I don't know what to say, guys, except that I just hope that you don't have to suffer. Look at this. Look at these. Look at the next red radar stations working overtime with this lined storm. The high frequency heating caused by Doppler radar. Um, you've got huge or powerful, extremely low frequencies along with these intersecting harp next red rings and yeah you can have tornadoes you can have baseball size hail you can have uh, a whole lot they can manufacture cyclones they can manufacture a tremendous amount of differing severe weather fronts but look at all of this and this is um, this is what I'm seeing and I have been seeing for the past two months all of the flooding you know that took place in Iowa and Nebraska South Dakota this is what we have been seeing man's hand in these storms one two three four five six, seven, eight. They're working it. They're working it and bringing an awful lot of destruction. And guys, it really pisses me off that, you know, Americans just look at us like we're crazy. So I they say that this is going to go on till tomorrow, guys, in this area, uh, southeast Texas, these line storms. They're holding this in Kansas. Now, I also want to bring your attention to Arkansas. I received an email from a subscriber who lives in Arkansas. No, I'm sorry. She was talking about Missouri. She has a friend in Springfield, Missouri. I may get some uh, of the facts a little messed up. I, I can't really recall, but I'm not going to get what she had said regarding the flooding in Springfield, Missouri. Uh, they got seven inches, seven inches in, well, I don't know, overnight, a couple of hours, in the early morning hours, and her friend, you know, had his son come down, and they were having to work really hard to get things in an area where they wouldn't be damaged by the flood, but no warning, no warning came. I also got a comment from a subscriber who I believe is in Texas. Um, I always thought she was in Ireland. Uh, maybe I'm confusing subscribers. I apologize. But she said there was absolutely nothing 
going on, and then suddenly she gets 18 warnings, 18 warnings, and that was Texas, 18. Strong tornadoes, a threat as severe weather strikes with flooding rain, baseball-sized hail, baseball-sized hail. Extreme thunderstorms have already unleashed hail as large as baseballs and flooding rainfall in West Texas and Oklahoma Tuesday afternoon. Um, hail the size of baseballs and larger threatened will continue to threaten severe damage to property and vehicles in Texas and Oklahoma. Tornado watch for most of western Texas, northwest Oklahoma, and southern Kansas. That will continue into Tuesday night. Now, well, you still have some hours to go. Texas Panhandle is the region where the most intense storms are expected. 20,000 20, without power in regions across Texas. I mean, uh, Tuesday night, the storms will consolidate into a line and move eastward through Texas, Oklahoma, and Kansas. These storms will produce heavy rainfall, damaging winds, possibly exceeding 60 miles per hour. Wednesday morning, there will be an ongoing complex of storms across Texas and Oklahoma that will continue to produce damaging winds and flooding rain. Giant damaging hail up to baseball size is potentially falling in Midland, Texas. Potentially? What do you mean potentially? And that comes from our National Weather Service, potentially. Hail larger than a quarter was spotted north of Andrews, Texas. Baseball-sized hail was confirmed near Lake Meredith and Fritch, Texas. Yeah, solid chunks of ice can cause an, a tremendous amount of damage. And the flooding. <laughs> Hell reports. Lake Meredith, Fritch, Dumas, Masterson. Uh, if that hit somebody in the head, it could kill them. So you can uh, look. Um, they're so putting this in our face now that, and yeah, they keep saying climate change and global warming. Well, we all know that that is the lie that they are using as they modify the weather. Tornadoes have hit six states with unusual frequency in 2019. One state has seen four times its average, Mississippi. The average is 21 tornadoes through April. They saw 83 through the first four months of this year. Um, Alabama, 71 tornadoes compared to 22. Georgia, 53 compared to 14. Missouri, 44 compared to 16. God. Well, it's just going to, it, it will continue, guys. It's just going to continue. An area of Kansas City notorious for flooding could soon see some relief. Businesses, though, in the area are not holding their breath. No, they know when this rain hits, it definitely puts them at risk. Leslie Aguilar is live near 103rd and Warnell to explain. Leslie, what changes are going to happen there? We know that's exactly where Coach's Bar and Grill was, and it was just a mess there two years ago. Yeah, where well, they're going to demolish this entire strip mall and also take out all of the asphalt. They're hoping by doing so, it'll release some of the flooding from Indian Creek that you see here. There's quite a bit of loud lightning, thunder and lightning going on right here right now. 
most notoriously, though, was the flooding back in 2017 when the place was underwater and the business owners had to be rescued. Several businesses along 103rd Street were ruined by floodwaters, including car dealerships that lost all their inventory. One of those dealers told me um, that they get nervous every time there's rain in the forecast and they have to move their vehicles to higher ground. They actually did that last night. A produce market down the street also lost of it a lot of inventory in the 2017 floods. The owner of that business is glad the city is finally doing something to help. When it happened the first time, they said it was a one in 500 year event. And then it happened again like three weeks later. So evidently, something's changing. Yes, so look into weather modification, please, and geoengineering. Man, that was a face palm. That was a, yep, did you hear the slap? Man. All right, what are they doing now? Well, they're going to turn the area green. All of this is, it, it's the playbook of Agenda 2030. Continuing coverage now of our flood alert. Drone video shows the devastation the rising Mississippi River is causing in Lincoln County. This is Winfield, where hundreds have been sandbagging for several days. The river there reached its fourth highest level in recorded history yesterday. And even though it's starting to drop, the pressure on the Pin Oak Levee is concerning. Farther up north is Foley. The town of about 200 people is mostly underwater, including several acres of farmland. The river is about a mile out of its banks. Across the river, sandbagging efforts are underway in Hardin, Illinois. The concern there is the Nutwood Levee along the Illinois River protecting Route 16. Downriver in St. Charles County, the flooding Mississippi has put some places out of business for the time being. Our Justina Coronel hopped on a boat today to give us a closer look. Justina? Well, as you can see all around me, I am surrounded by water. And to see some of the conditions, let's take a look over here. Check out all of this water. This shouldn't be here, and it looks like a lake, but underneath it is farmland. And if we take a look down the road, it is also covered by water. And if you go by car, you can only make it so far. And if you want to go by the Mississippi River to go to those shops and to the marina, well, you got to go by boat. And that's exactly what we did today. This is the road we would be driving in on right here. The only way to get to the boathouse in St. Charles County, well, is by boat. The river is right on the other side of that row of trees. The owners of the boathouse food and deck right over every day to see how the restaurant is doing. And along the way, you see the top of mailboxes. The mailbox. Oh, it makes me sick. A speed limit sign surrounded by water and a road that's made for cars now acts like a river. When you see that last tree, we are in the real Mississippi River. Tony and Richard Luttrell have been owners of the boathouse for eight years. So the boathouse food and deck is my life. It's my child. It's my baby. And just like other businesses on the Mississippi River. This is kind of like, uh, you could kind of say the, the golden triangle uh, of marina life uh, here in the St. Charles area. They're feeling the effects of the flooding. A propane tank tied down, furniture and band equipment stacked up, and a flooded deck is not the normal sight here. So right now we're at 32 here. The boathouse just opened for the season in March. Then had to close for flood, then reopened and flooded again. So technically we've had no income this year, so to speak. It's and all of the employees that work there, they have no work now. The ripple effects of this are so wide and it's endless. Okay, now this is the latest drone footage of St. Charles from the, those levee breaches, more flooding. But I need to do this. I need to do this. A patent, hurricane and tornado control device, 
You can affect the formation and direction of weather system by projecting sound waves toward the periphery of weather systems, and sound waves can cause it to rain. Wow, really? OK, so when you see what's happening on the periphery, these extremely low frequencies, sound waves. Oh, and that was one hell of a shot, wasn't it? Right here. Coming up. All of the fanned out <coughs> uh, lines that you are seeing are the extremely low frequencies sound waves. So, let me also bring you to another patent, weather modification by artificial satellite. What can it do? Influence the jet stream, uh, cause precipitation, increase the humidity, modify the jet stream path, and therefore, therefore modify the weather. Oh, they could cause rapid heating of air masses. They can create a whirlwind or a small tornado. The whirlwind or tornado strength can be increased or decreased by combining and colliding many smaller whirlwinds together. They can mitigate the tornado, influence wind speed, it can generate acoustic waves, which can influence wind speed and the direction of that wind speed. Oh my god, it came out of nowhere. Acoustic energy associated with mesos like cyclones indicates a strong correlation with tornadic activity. Create high humidity air mass or form clouds, increase the moisture content of the air mass, cosmic particle ignition of artificially ionized plasma patterns in the atmosphere, weather control applications, modification of the steering winds that influence weather phenomena, influence the charge distribution in mesocyclones, Lightning, steering winds, localized heating, influence the charge. Yes, I just read that. Okay, how do we get through to people that we are actually living war? Atmospheric heating as a research tool. The microwave heating technologies provide methods for rapidly heating well defined regions of a weather system. Heating the rain, heating rain droplets with microwaves. It's hard to know that these storms are being created by men and to watch the devastation to people's lives is really, it's just getting they can intensify tornadoes, near surface intensification of tornado vortices. vortices. And yes, the high power, extremely low frequency radiation generated by modulated high frequency heating of the ionosphere can cause earthquakes, cyclones, localized heating. And that is what you see right here. Let me get it to satellite off the radar. High frequency heating. High frequency heating. Well, they could even <laughs> um, load tornadoes with fine scale debris to intensify them. All right. Well, I will link below to everything and. Oh.
So we will see you at 10 o'clock right here on air. And in the meantime, you can always go online. And of course, our ABC 13. All right, so they're now going off uh, line. It's no longer live. But you guys in these areas, fill us in, please. You know what I'm finding very hard now? I can't find... Yeah, you know, people used to post so many videos on YouTube during these flooding events. Now they may be posting on Instagram or Twitter or Facebook or whatever. But I can't find the damage to the homes. So the subscriber who lives in Arkansas, who has a friend in Springfield, Missouri, he said that homes are under water. And I can't find anything that confirms that. I'm not saying that he's lying. I just think it's very interesting. I am not able to find uh, the information that I used to be able to find. I, I feel like they're hiding uh, the massive devastation that they are, they are creating. I hope I'm wrong. But if you guys know, if you guys live in this area and you have local uh, publications, local news that is showing the real devastation of what is taking place, please drop the links below. All right, guys, stay safe. Stay safe. Ciao.